Um, call to order. Uh, first item of business is the agenda approval. Any questions, comments, changes? No, that's good. I'll we'll take a motion. I move, please. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Agenda is approved. Um, next is public comment. Wait. Approval of minutes. I'm sorry. Getting ahead of myself. Approval of the minutes. I move we approve the minutes as drafted. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion at all? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Minutes approved. Making good progress. <laughs> Number four. Public comment. All right. This is. <laughs> David, this is the first meeting I think I've ever been in. There's been no public participation. I can you imagine? Yeah, I know, I know. Committee. Yeah, I guess we're I public. Here. We can go get people off the beach and tell them this party is going on. I, I, I just am amazed. But, okay. There's a party out here you're missing. Yeah. Okay, so hearing no public comment, we'll move to item five, which is really the purpose for this meeting, is to have the kickoff with the auditor. And LC is here, and I will just turn it over to you. Okay. It's yours. <laughs> All right. Uh, my name's Elsa Swenson. I've been with Mark Starnes for 13 years now. Um, I've worked with you guys a few years. And uh, this is our interim week. So this is where we come on site and we look at your internal controls. I'm doing an inventory observation on Friday morning. We evaluate your grant expenditures to determine if any grants become major and need to be tested for single audit purposes. And then we review your interim balances and make sure that your fund balance rolls properly and your transfers net to zero. And um, we get all, all the preparation done for our final audit, which is July 22nd week. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> July 22nd week, we'll review the final trial balance we look at all your final balances. Uh, we review any final internal controls through the end of the year. And then we do our grant testing if any grants become a uh, single audit level. Um, and then the following week, uh, July 29th week, we have the audit draft schedule. So um, we can complete the draft typically in a week, uh, but it depends on any open items. So certain items like uh, the Kavanaugh report for LEO are often sent later uh, because they just may not have that available. So that can things like that can hold up the draft, but we usually get the draft as far as we can that week. Okay, and can then, you, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but sure. we've got new members, including me. Sure. Um, Kavanaugh report. What is that? Your, Who's Leo? <laughs> Leo is your law enforcement officer separation allowance. Okay. Um, it's not a person. Right, right. <laughs> so it's it's an actuary report that we get, and we have to include that in the financial statements. Okay. So um, that's something that usually comes uh, typically by the first of August. So that might be a few days into our drafting that we get that information. And that's um, to make sure you're solvent on the retirement, right? Is that what that is? Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. And then. Um, once we finish the draft, it goes to the audit partner for a technical review. That process typically takes a week. Um, and then once we get that back from her, we have to make any changes that are necessary and send it back for a second review. Um, one thing we, we are very proud of is we do a very thorough review process on the financial statements. It goes through several levels of review. Um, so after the partner tech review, we go through a proofing process where our administrative team takes the financial statements and makes sure they're in a nice format, um, all the page numbering is good, makes everything look pres <coughs> presentable. Excuse me. And then once we have that process complete, we send the financial statements to Daniel, and we will send those to um, your third party ski reviewer. Um, Alan Thompson, I believe, is still that reviewer. So, um, and they review and, and have a chance to look over everything, make sure they're in agreement, and make sure everything looks good. Um, once that process is complete, then we send the report back to our administrative team, 
and they compile the final PDF. So what we don't want to have happen is we don't want to spend a lot of time doing a final PDF and then send it and then have a bunch of corrections and then have to redo the entire thing. So that's why we send it and we'll send files in Excel and Word to make sure they're reviewed and, and everything looks good and then we process and put it in the final PDF. That process takes about a week as well. And it just, it, it can only, sometimes it can take a couple days to do that, but it just depends. We have a lot of reports in the process, so it, we always allow a week for our staff just because um, we may have 10 or 12 reports going at one time. So um, then once that final PDF is ready, getting ready to submit to the LGC, we do another quality review by a senior manager at the firm who does not, she is not involved in the audit process. So that's an internal control that we have to make sure that we have someone not involved with the audit who knows, she reviews every single report at our firm before it goes to the LGC. So she catches little grammar details or maybe a dollar's off somewhere and, and she'll, she'll catch that. And if we have any major revisions, we always will send that back to Daniel to do a final review um, if necessary. Um, and then we'll, we're ready to submit to the LGC. And the deadline is October 31st. And uh, unless we have any major open items, that, that is definitely feasible. We will have that submitted by October 31st. Okay. Great. And then we, we typically do the audit presentation. Um, I know with, with the audit committee, we will do a phone call, like a conference call. And then um, I'll come on site for the actual board presentation. And I believe, I think we usually do around the November 19th meeting. Um, I am available that day if that works for you all. That's the, the BOC meeting day? Okay. And that's, um, that's all I have unless you have questions for me or would like to get the audit committee presentation date scheduled? Um, sure. Actually, I mean, we're a relatively new board and um, coming up to speed, I'm finding out that not every town has an audit committee. Yeah. And even I, I went to some local government commission, um, I'm sorry, um, League of Municipality training sessions and like nobody had an audit committee. Yeah, well, they need one. Oh. I know. <laughs> so I'm, I, I think it would be helpful for us, you know, we understand we're working with you, we're working with the town manager, we're working with Daniel, maybe other party in the DOC. Um, how, what experience do you have or how do you see us being useful but not in the way but doing what we're supposed to be doing? I think really just um, once you get a copy of the financial statements, kind of review that and, and ask any questions that you have and um, maybe get that information back to the, to the board. and. Okay, and what, what level of what you just talked through would that be? Okay, um, when I send, when I send the, the statements to Daniel, what, that would probably be the best time for you to look through them. Okay, um, so, so that's after the Allen Thompson third party review? It would be about the same time, okay. yeah. Okay. So. So after this, the, the technical review, second review, proofing, and then the third party review. Okay. Right. So during that time frame, so um, I can send the statements to Daniel and he can send those on to you all. And um, if anyone has questions or anything, I'm more than happy to answer. Okay. Does that work with you, Daniel, David? Cause we, we, well, the, the only question I would have was how, how would that dialogue take place uh, in public? Okay. How, how does that how does that feedback occur in public Can now we? now you do the the chart your charter says that you're supposed to meet quarterly at yep. least yep. And, and I haven't looked at the calendar but that may be a, that may that, be that a was my thought was we coordinate because I, I, I don't think and I'm we, just bullet here no 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 that's what that's good because um, we haven't scheduled meetings to my knowledge and I wanted to coordinate it so that we could you know do what we can do to help have it in a public meeting not preempt you know anything you guys are doing or 
have yet to do. So um, I, I think that would work well, and I think we would call a meeting. Um, are you typically, would you be here for that or otherwise, or is that? It's a call. I would, I would, I'm a few hours away from here, so it would typically be remote. I know okay. we have kind of built in with the audit contract, we have the one presentation built into that. Okay. So um, if you did need me to come on site, that might be something that we would have to do a, a supplemental fee for. But um, okay. I, I can easily do a Zoom call. I can do um, conference call over the phone, I'm reachable by email. Um, there's many ways we can be we can coordinate that. Okay. I, I think a virtual would be fine. I, I assume we've got the capability to do that. And okay. um, I assume that date has not yet been set on your end, or are we in a position we could pick a day? Oh, uh, sure. So um, I guess if you had questions on the financial statements, um, we could set up a day for that. Um, yeah, I think if we could get the financial report, but statements when you send them to Daniel and David and then give us some time to review them and sure. then we'd have a call to okay. it'd be a public it'd be it'd be this but we'd have a virtual right yeah we can pick phone or zoom, zoom or, something. or something up sure, sure. And, and then you can bring us up to speed okay Elsie I think what might be helpful is just to schedule around the audit right we're starting field work this day we take we want to end field work this day yeah. And the whole cycle in a year, the whole cycle, if we have kind of some dates or at least an indication, we could schedule audit committee meetings, quarterly audit committee meetings around that sure. if we knew the entire cycle. So if, if you could send that um, to us, uh, that might be helpful. Okay, I can send yeah. it to kind, of kind of just what you told us. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. Uh, I think it would be perfect. Certainly. Okay. I can send that to Daniel and he can send that on to you all. Okay, great. Okay. I assume it's best work through Daniel and or just communicate to both of us and our, both groups and and then that would be the, the after the proofing third party review and then we got the same situation for the final I, I think if you're here for the BOC I mean what um, I, I guess I, I don't know what the ordinance says whether we get it at the same time or we get it ahead of the BOC I believe what we did last year is uh, we did a conference call um, early November, okay. maybe a couple weeks before the um, the, board, the BOC meeting. So um, we can certainly do that. Uh, I would prefer after October 31st just because we have a lot of reports going and that's a very busy time for us. But we can also schedule that um, review for any questions that you have uh, probably sometime in October just so that we can get that done before we submit. Okay, so the timing, the, the meeting we just previously talked about in this one would be both in October, is that what I'm hearing? Or? Um, I would say one meeting in maybe early October to go over any questions that you have. Okay. Um, and then all related to the financial statements and then a meeting in early November to review the final audit presentation okay. because I'll have the um, PowerPoint slides ready by then to uh, go over uh, for everything that's going to be said in the board of commissioners meeting. Elsie, your question. You said that last year there was a November conference call to yes. go over the financials. Was that just with the audit committee? Yes. Is that, I mean, um, is that um, an open meetings? I mean, that needed that needed or needs to be an open meeting when we do it, something like it that. It is. Right? Yeah. It is. So when you do a conference call, you just let people know that they can join it's, the it's a meeting call. like this, right? And then oh, it's right here. So it's yeah, not. They, they, okay. they come. They come I in. Misinterpret what the conference call. Because you guys have to be present as a quorum. Yeah. And yeah. basically, the way that it works is that the public gets to witness yeah. the dialogue. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just want when you say conference call, I thought maybe it was a was a close call of some sort. Of it's a conference right. with them. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're here sitting yeah. or, you know, I, I guess. I just want to make yeah. sure I'm clear on the rules is all. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and, and I think. what we can do and can't do. And I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I need the review and maybe Heather, you can. So we need a quorum right. here. Here. 
one of our members could dial in if they couldn't, as long as we had a quorum, but they wouldn't vote. Or I mean, there's really no vote, I don't think, on that. It's just... Yeah, they wouldn't count toward the quorum if somebody yeah. on the committee dialed in. Okay. But, yeah, okay. they have to be sitting in the let, let me ask you this question. Let's say you ran into a difficult audit issue. Let's say we just totally blew up for one reason or another, totally inadvertent. How do you communicate that? I typically communicate that with the finance director okay. and um, and the, t the town manager, and then we would go from there on uh, writing up. If it needed to be a finding, we would write that up, and then um, you all would have the, uh, the section for the corrective action plan where you can provide a written response and okay. what the corrective action would be. Okay. Or can, can, I, can I ask that same question this way? Yeah. What happens if you find um, untowardly um, um, actions on the town manager's behalf? Who do you report that to? That's a good question. Okay. The, board. Yeah. the committee. The committee. The no. board. The, the board, board of commissioners. Yeah, commission. The board of commissioners. Yeah. Okay. So it's not necessarily not an issue. It's a board issue. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That helps me. That helps me get my bearing in terms okay. of what belongs to where. Sure. Okay. Those are my questions. Did you have any? No, I'm not Additional. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, yeah, I've got Go a few. What are the significant areas of audit risk for this audit? The significant areas of audit risk are the risk of management override of internal controls related okay. to budget amendments, journal entries, okay. specifically in any accounting estimates, and then um, revenue recognition. Cut, is that mainly cut off or in terms of what, what's the concern in revenue recognition? Uh, the presumed risk is overstatement of revenues. Okay. Okay. And we communicate that within a uh, governance letter. So we're, we send a governance letter to all the board members. Okay. So that should be forthcoming. We're working on that. Okay. Got it. Um, you're now working on interim. You're using May numbers to do interim, then you roll that forward. Is that how you, how yes. you do it at the end? Okay. Yes. Okay. Got it. Another question, and I've been asking David and Heather about this. Um, as I've been listening to the Board of the Commissioner meetings and whatnot, it strikes me that this town receives a lot of grants. I'm giving credit to the staff. This town receives a lot of grants and a lot of public money and other money, if you will. How do you get comfortable with all the grants that are out there, the things we have committed to over time, over decades? How do you get comfortable that we don't have a contingent liability out there somewhere because we didn't meet some small term of a grant or something along those lines? When we look at your grants as a, we look at your grants as a whole and we have a spreadsheet that we use to track your grant revenues, your grant expenditures, mm -hmm. um, what's remaining in the grant. And then um, for single audit purposes, we do test grants on a sample basis. So um, we, we won't be able to test 100% of the grants. Um, but in our requirements, we test grants that are federal over 750000 unless it was audited within the last two years um, with no findings. Okay. But, and then for, well, I just wanted to add, yeah. because those grants are being monitored by the monitoring organizations. There are programmatic monitoring and there's financial monitoring that's happening at the state and federal level no matter how large the grant is. Right. So their compliance is being tracked currently, and an auditor would not necessarily pick up some of the more finer points of grant compliance issues, but a program monitor will pick up the compliance issue. And I wanted to tag on to that, Tim, because I think it's an important point that you're making. Because one, we all want more grants, right? That helps us <laughs> as, as citizens, but the managing them is hard. And one of the things you brought up in the audit last year was the lack of redundancy in staffing. And so I do worry about, you know, the ability, doesn't mean you shouldn't take them, but I do think the staff have done a great job, but they're doing as hard, I guess. And y'all mentioned it in the audit last year, right? right. Were you our auditor last year? Yes. So do you want to say more about that? Because <laughs> uh, I think Tim's point, like I, I share his, like I want, as a tax paying citizen, I want us to get all the grants because when we do that, that relieves our financial burden, right? Like that's great for all of us to get that kind of stuff. The issue is, you know, this current staff being able to be compliant because it's not easy. 
I mean, we have their grants out there with 30, 34 special conditions on, you know, you know, right, and right. so somebody needs to do that. And actually, I've talked with David a little bit about it, but like when you see similarly sized budgets, is there somebody who is helping with the compliance and reporting to the entities? Do we look different substantially than other towns our size, I guess, is the question with similar grants. Do you know the answer? Um, Sorry about that. I'm <laughs> no, I, I, I'll tag on to that a little bit because I think okay. we're great at applying for grants and we're great yeah. at you know checking all the boxes That's and great. getting the grants. But we want to comply. But, but then... Yeah. You know, there's confusion, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm confused a lot of times, like, right, what, are, what did we commit to? You know, we, we, we applied and we did a very thorough application, but then there's a contract and there's all kinds of commitments made. And I think that's where we're at is, like, understanding what we are now legally obligated to do. Sure. Um, I've seen a couple different options. I know uh, some units that get quite a bit of grants will hire a grants manager. That's so what, yeah. that person is dedicated to making sure you're meeting the grant requirements. Um, I've also seen some of that outsourced um, where you can work with like a local council of government, um, have some assistance in reviewing and monitoring those grants. Um, ultimately, the town would still be responsible and would have to dedicate someone to being responsible Doing for the grants, planning. but you can outsource certain pieces of that. So um, there are different options. I am seeing towns about your size uh, growing in their grants, and a lot of places are having a similar concern and uh, needing to address that. So yeah, reporting um, those are just two of the options. That it I just came up to me just independently listening. To, I didn't realize there's all this history to it, but I, <laughs> I was just listening to the board of commissioner meeting. And like, well, I mean, I listened to it with accounting years. It's kind of sick, but. Um, and I think, wow, that's a lot of compliance in some of these grants. And yes. it seemed, I mean, I think what I would expect to see, I guess, and this is an inexperience on my part, but at least a summary of the grant on file somewhere. Here's what, here's what we applied for, here's what we didn't, here's what we, here's all things we committed to over time and keeping those, those summaries in the file. Do we have those summaries, David, or do we kind of I mean, piecemeal that together? They require reporting. You have to report quarterly on everything. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You have to submit a court. They're For 30 years? No. Uh, until your p grant period of performance is over. When it's over, yeah. then you're done. Yeah. 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 I mean, I do. That's but what I, I guess, <laughs> yeah, Here you say you test them on a random basis. You take a random sample and test them on a random basis. It's Size. not quite as random. Uh, it is based on the expenditures. So um, we a judgmental do, sample. Yes, we do a sample. Um, if it's uh, for federal, it's seven hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. For state, it's five hundred thousand. And then we also have to get a total percent coverage of the total grant dollars. So if we have several grants, uh, we might have to test two or three to get forty percent coverage of your mm -hmm. total grant dollars. I understand so, how to do that. Okay. Yeah. But you're not. You're looking financially, not programmatically. I would imagine, yeah. Right. Right. How do, you, how do you capture the population of grants when you're doing that testing? How do you, how do you know the population is complete? We, uh, we take your trial balance and we reconcile your uh, grant revenues and we do a spreadsheet and compare the revenues to the expenditures. Mm -hmm. And so if you spent, let's say you have a new grant and you've spent 500000 on it, um, but you've only received 250000 in revenue, you should book a receivable if you've met the grant requirements for the rest. So ideally, they should match, and you should be able to reconcile and capture your full population that okay. way. Okay. So so let's say 20 years from now, we committed to something on Block Q. Well, actually, the we, boat ramp's what I'm thinking. Okay, whatever. <laughs> let's, that's say, let's say we committed to something on Block Q, and it's, a 30, it's got a 30-year tail on it. How, in year 28, how do you know that you've got that grant in your population? Um, we do, for multi-year grants, we do a spreadsheet to make sure <clears throat> for each year that we've captured. Like, we'll do the, um, we'll document the total grant award, might be $14 million or so. And so each year we're, we're doing a revenue and expenditure I, I got that, but you that. weren't the auditors 28 years ago. Somebody else was the auditors 28 years ago. Correct. How do you know you've got that grant? You've got your spreadsheets rolled forward, everything that you know since you've been auditors. 
right. um, and some a little bit of the old stuff. But how do you know you've got that? That somebody audited it 28 years ago. How do you know you've got that grant and the population are compliant with that grant in year 28? You, you won't because you won't? the compliance um, there's there won't even be any monitoring, right? So it'll be a period of performance. Um, and it's basically for the state and the feds, we made a promise and we're going to keep it. That's how it works. <laughs> well, I mean, some of these are for perpetuity. <laughs> well, you, well, yeah, because you swear you're never going to sell a thing or whatever, but they're not monitoring for compliance past the period of performance. So they're either three or five years or whatever grant making time you have available to you. And so they're, they're only going to monitor for the period of performance until you've expended all the funds. And I guess if everybody dies in 30 years and you want to sell it, you could. Well, well, <laughs> they're, 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 wait a minute, let's, let's, <laughs> I, <laughs> you could. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Won't be me. Not me either, I won't be here. Yeah, many, many, of these, many of these grants are written into the deed. Yeah, they yeah. may be. Sure. They are. Yeah, they're yeah. 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 sure. yeah. sure. yeah. David, you had something to say? That was it. For the longer yeah. term ones, the, um, the capture of the commitment is embedded in the deed. Ah, in okay. The, 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 All right, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and then what that you will see for is, for those that yeah. are real proper. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. If it structures, it's. We, well, we told you we we're going to do it, and the real property concerns you more than anything because that's where the dollars would be. If right. you really, so they, we really had a blow somewhere somehow. Yeah. That'd be where the dollars would be. I wouldn't be concerned about well, real real property for the, from. Trust in the deeds, the trust in the grants will be rep in, the, in the deed. Right. The uh, the building, a building like building the uh, restroom on Clock Block Q, that's in twenty. It's a twenty-five year commitment to the state. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not as concerned about building a bound. I'm concerned about the big numbers, not the mm -hmm. little numbers here. Not a lot of huge numbers, are they? Huh? They're not a lot of huge numbers <laughs> for grants. I well, I mean, what, what? <laughs> if, FEMA if it's got a comma in it, it's big to me. <laughs> if, um, yeah. Well, they get $2 million for the one pumping station or something, $2.5 million. That's a good deal. Yeah, um, those, I, I guess that's the question, because we've got a combination in, of EPA and others for the sewer station. Is that? Yeah, all of those are grants. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, there's fun. some discussion on how to categorize the list station grants, but right. we're getting reads from the state treasurer's office on how to do that accurately. Okay. I guess I'll continue because last year there was a letter we had to write to the LGC for water sewer, and I guess I don't totally understand. I, I just, water sewer this year is going to be a big year because of the grants, because of the whatever, and coming off of last year, um, I, I, I don't know how to characterize it, but we had to write a letter um, explaining um, the situation. Um, I'm sorry, what's the question? Uh, the question is, <laughs> maybe if you could help me understand the, the, that letter and the, the reason we had to write it and, and whether that's going to occur again this year, and then what new grant um, issues do you see because we do have multiple significant multi-million dollar grants that are coming in this year for that work. Okay. So when we get the final balances, um, I'll be able to tell more on that. But um, the final balances are entered into uh, what's called an LGC data input sheet. And that sheet calculates a lot of ratios, and um, that will populate what uh, any concerns, if, if there are any, um, that the LGC would like to address. And um, I can take a look back at the letter and get back with you on that just to, um, to analyze that. But um, basically... I mean, Daniel can wait. It was a revenue source, okay. right? That didn't sure. Get, yeah. Okay, sure. So that, that letter, when we sent that in, we told them this was going to be a recurring problem because their indicator doesn't take into account our capital fee revenue for the sewer capital fee. It, only take, it doesn't count that as operating revenue, but debt is an operating expense. So they're counting the expense, but they're not accounting the revenue that covers that expense. And they told us that keep this letter, <laughs> you will send it in next year. So, but they, they didn't have a concern about changing anything after we explained to them how, how our fee structure is set up. 
this was the first year we did that, right? First no. year they sent they sent that no. letter before in the past. Yes, okay. yes. we we've, we've had to send the letter. They just started doing these indicators three years ago, yeah. and one year we missed it by a little bit, but it wasn't much. And the other two years we we've, we've had to send the letter. So. And, and those in is that what feeds their dashboard where you can go in of the web and create yes charts? Okay. That's it. okay and I guess that's a leading indicator of some sort that the, for a sign of financial weakness if you don't if you can't match that revenue and that expense yeah for, for the enterprise funds they're supposed to be self-sufficient so they're trying to make sure that that they are yeah and ours is but like I said the the, the revenue they're not calling it Operating Got it. Got it. It's a special assessment. Thank you. So I guess the other question was these grant the EPA and the other grants for the sewer station coming in because this will be the year I guess that they're hitting the books. Um, if you have any questions, issues, or things that we should be aware of, um, I'd like to interject sure. something just as well. To begin with, else is auditing the past That's year, right. yep. and that is in the upcoming year. <laughs> yep, yep, got it, got it. Can I ask one final question about the audit before we? Sure. Um, I know the strength of the balance sheet is a big deal to auditors. Um, the stronger the balance sheet, the less the risk typically. As you size up the town of Holden Beach balance sheet vis-a-vis -vis the revenues and revenue streams and those types of things, how would you classify our balance sheet? Strong, medium, weak? Where would you put us? Um, I need to look. At, I, I just got started yesterday, and I started with your internal controls, so I, I'm not looking at the balance sheet for this year yet. Okay. Um, but I can get you. An well, let's uh, discuss it at year end. Maybe I, maybe when you get the. Sure. When you get the audited financial, I'd be, I'd be interested in your firm's view of the strength of the balance sheet. I have no opinion one way or the other, by the yeah. way. I, don't, I haven't really looked at it, but I'm a balance sheet guy. I mean, I haven't looked at it that close, but I'm a balance sheet guy, and I know auditors are a balance sheet auditors, and balance sheet's yes. a big deal. So I just want the firm's view on kind of the strength sure. of our balance sheet. Sure. Sorry, Tom. No, no, no. <laughs> this is this is helpful. Very, very helpful. Yeah. This is only our second meeting as a group, so. <laughs> Sorry, you had to teach us some Yeah, stuff. no, we, we appreciate it. Um, last call. If not, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for being here. And if you give us the calendar, we'll get these next dates on there. And, uh, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Moving on to item six, and, and this is really something I'd just like to tee up um, for your consideration to think about, and we can talk about it at the next meeting. It has to do with financial reporting. Um, basically, I think in the packet, there's, there's two levels. Um, the, the one that gets posted to the um, website every month is the month end. 42 pages down at the line item level, you know, in the weeds. And um, as the commissioner, and I think the other commissioners I've talked to, same thing, it's really hard at this level to, to answer our responsibilities, which is, you know, where we stand. Are we in good shape? Are we not in good shape? Oh, let me, let me divert just a little bit. And this is all coming from, I attended a League of Municipalities training for commissioners um, regarding financial and I stole their mm. book, mm. so I'll hand Good. out the book to everybody. And I got a couple of, I don't know, you, you probably have yeah. one. Okay. So this is the one that got me thinking about this, and I'm, I'm trying to get their best practices and say, what, what, what are you seeing that you would recommend? But, but um, it's got me thinking about, you know, on a monthly basis, monitoring the financials, you know, how did we do this month, any big significant things that, that we should be aware of, how does it compare to last month kind of stuff, and then how does it compare to this month last year, um, where do we stay on this year as compared to, you know, some very basic, probably less than half a dozen, but they're the key questions that commissioners should be asking of, you know, you know answer these things, and, and we can get to it. So. What we've got right now is we've got that detailed report and then we've got these charts that Daniel creates that um, feedback, I, I mean, they're 
they're hard to read, <laughs> for one thing, and they're hard to understand in terms of answering the questions that, that I think the board needs to be able to answer. So what I'd like to do is just tee this up. Um, I think this, this monthly report that gets posted, the 42 pages, is great. It answers everything, but you know the time it takes to glean out of that what we want to do. So I'm, I'm hoping for some dashboard, graphical, or maybe just rolled up to, you know, police, public works, some level, but something that is board level. So on a monthly report, the monthly board meeting, July, you know, we're starting the new year, but, you know, the June meeting we should have had through the end of May, we should be able to very quickly say, we, we see where we're probably going to fall in the next month type of thing. So, um, that's kind of what I'll just tee up, and it's in, and quite frankly, it's you know it's this one with the charts. I think there's room for improvement. Maybe we can build on it, make it better, make it easier to read, um, or we can come up with something else. But I'm, I'm you know, our charter as an audit committee is to um, assist and advise the board of commissioners regarding the financial reporting process. Uh -huh. So I see it in our scope of what we should do, and I think it's something we can really add value as a committee. And it'll help everybody if we if we can come up and say you know here's a dashboard here's a very high level snapshot that you can look at and then if you want to peel the onion and go deep you can go into the 42 pages and get yeah. into the, so that's as much as I'm going to talk about but um, I have a sample I can yeah I've got some samples too I've been floating <laughs> around um, Tom, let me ask this question of David David if I were the next town manager coming on I'm going to start next week. What would you tell me are the most important things I need to watch for in terms of where you get in trouble financially? Another question is, what are your key minute, financial that, concerns? Well, I, th I think that's really where I was, <laughs> I was, yeah. I was going to. Yeah. I, would, um, I would tell the next town manager uh, I would remind them that 50% of the budget is in revenues because nobody pays attention to revenues, um, but they only think of the budget as the expense side. Um, and that's really a fundamental, you know, kind of thing. Um, and of those revenues, I have pretty much three that I, that I well, and, and now four, because we got, a, we got another major player with parking. And um, I'd say get smart on your occupancy tax law um, and the revenue that goes with that. Understand that intimately. Um, and, and, that, and occupancy tax is by far and above the single largest revenue that we have. And uncontrolled. Period. And uncontrolled. Period. Well, I mean, I think that what we... What that what we do in support as a town goes a long way yeah. towards I mean, supporting I mean, that or uncontrolled. On a month to month basis. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, my my concern we've talked about it if is if it goes down next if it goes down next month, it's not going to recover in the month after. Yeah, if we get hit with a whopper early in the year and it wipes out our tourist season, that I mean, that's what yeah. would keep me awake at night. Well, sorry, did I sorry to interrupt your train of thought. Yeah. Um, and um, the stack, second one, uh, I, and I won't characterize it as needing careful watching, um, but it does require monitoring. Um, and that is, of course, the ad valorem tax collection as it comes in. And that's a, that's a, a steady indicator. We don't have wildly fluctuating uh, ad valorem taxes. The new uh, uh, revenue this year of course, is the parking revenue, and as that as that evolves and grows over time, you know that that would be a um, not only the revenue that I would track um, discreetly, you know, in, in and by itself, but also all the the accoutrements that go with that. The fourth uh, revenue there is a cluster of revenues in the general fund, and and it's the building. Uh, revenues that come in because that while it's not a specific um, indicator of any type of malaise it is a general indicator and so the and and some of those 
uh, uh, revenues in, in inspections, and there's six to eight of them. Um, they're symbiotically related, but by analyzing them uh, in conjunction with occupancy tax, the ad valorem tax, you can, you can ascertain what the building industry is doing here. Now, all you got to do is go pull permits to, you know, to see or go down and, and look at the, uh, the, the murder board in, in the inspections department to, to validate some of those. So those, I mean, and, you know, off the cuff, those are the, those are the four things. Um, the, uh, from the expense side, it is, um, I think that we got a pretty darn good handle on budget discipline. You can go to my, any one of my department heads right now and ask them what their uh, interpretation of internal controls are, and they're going to give you, I got to get a purchase order, I got to make sure that I've pre-flighted it with, a, with the finance officer and that the manager signed off on it. So those, those types of, of, of and, and, and those department heads aren't by training financial people. So there's some type of, uh, of, of reinforcement by process that, that we've, we've got. So th those would be the type of, of things um, to bolster internal controls and advise the, the new guy coming in, new person coming in. Is it fair to say, based on what you just said, is it fair to say that once the expense side is set, the expense side is set, not a lot not a lot to manage there other than the department's head managing their budget or there's exceptions, those types of things. But really what you need to watch closely is the revenue and the trends in revenue. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would also that, qualify that, that as I would I would also qualify that as yeah, the steady state things that we always do, yeah. those pretty much run. Yeah. You know, autonomously. Um, and projects are the things that have to be managed yeah. Uh, yeah. more intensely than, say, the department heads. Now, right. you, you had different department heads, it may, that may be different too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got it, got it. But we, we've got the great fortune of having some, some uh, uh, seasoned yeah. department heads. Yeah. And, and um, I guess you said like building inspections and building permits are a, kind of a leading indicator of what the revenue base is gonna do you know, a year out, two years out, three years out, four years out, could be. So you probably want to see a trend analysis and that, you know, what if, what if those revenues have been doing over time? Are we trending up, are we trending down? So that might be a little different graph that you have in the corner than somewhere else. But that's, that's helpful to understand kind of what the, the key performance indicators are, coming up with some of the key performance indicators. My question to you, Tom, is what's the board want? What's the board want? Or need just a more summary or... Yeah, I mean, the board basically gets overwhelmed when the packet comes out, <laughs> and there's so much on it, yeah. and, and you know, the financial right now is this, yeah. so it's like, yeah. to me, it's like this is a, you know, this is a weak, you know, our ability to look at the packet and pull out the, you know, nuggets of yeah. questions, yeah. It, you know, because... Are, are there specific financial issues that the board has concerns about or like watched or do they have some input or some views on the financial operations of the of the uh, town that they'd like to see or all provide oversight on or is there anything um, in that regard? I mean I'll just answer my perspective the focus was very 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 much on the budget and I think once the budget's in place the focus will be more on budget amendments and changes okay. to it and, and I agree it's a project because right now there's a lot of projects that people are talking about that aren't in the budget. So I could see them coming and they will need a budget amendment, you know, to take on anything significant. There's projects in there, but the big ticket block cube here are not really in there. Yeah, got so, it. Um, got it. Okay. Is that fair? I mean, I can't. Hey, it's fair. I can't see what the board will do now. The budget's in place. I know what the board did. It seems like that was our whole life just to get to the point where we got the budget in place. And now it's a different life. Um, no, it's a good, great question. Thank you. <laughs> going forward. Um, only other thing I'll add to this comment is at the meeting I was at, it was in Goldsboro, this, this training session, there was some legal municipality, and I was kind of floating this around, and the answer they gave me is it's very dependent on the software 
Now, I told them, I think based on something I heard in orientation, that we use Harris. Is that the right software? Yes. Harris Smart Vision. Is good Harris now. Smart Vision? Or with microphone. Okay. They, um, they said, that I, I said, GovHub too, whatever that is. And they said, oh, that's good. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, smart Visions. But they kind of said that, uh, I mean, they said that, um, you know, the software typically does have abilities to generate these types of dashboards and high-level reports, it's, or at least that's a starting point, because if, if it doesn't, then you've got to build one, but if it's got it in there. So I think that's something that maybe we need your help. You know, what, what, what can it do? You know, what's easy versus, you know, building a whole new, I think this, you yeah. export to Excel and then create yeah, that, an Excel. Yeah, that was an export and, uh, well, some combination Yeah, I mean, they, they, they have hundreds of different reports we can run, and we're still learning the new software, and we haven't run all the reports yet, but I mean, if, you, if you tell us what you're looking for, I mean, we can, we can look through those reports and see if there's something that lines up exactly with what you're, what you're wanting. Yep. Okay. I, I think David just told us what we're looking for and what we, what we need to be looking for. Yeah, I mean, I, my, I, can, my, I can tell you what I do. You know, I mean, we talk about occupancy tax. I got 15 years of occupancy tax by by month. I track that stuff. I, so you do that. You do that long term. You got that long term trend analysis. Yeah. That you've already done. Yeah. 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 Now, um, hadn't done it for ad valorem because I mean that's that that's Seven. really a subjective uh, or I know it, but that I want that is subject to change yeah. every year. Yeah. Um, but you know that's that's an example of one that we really have dissected up, down, sideways. You know, um, as a matter of fact, yeah. I, and and the challenge for parking is going to be able to you know to track that also. And now that we've you know we've been through the first two years of that, and I think it's semi where it's going to be for a while. That'll that'll be uh, more stable in its in its its values. I think. Um, so those. How I mean, often do you get to a point where you say, "Geez, I have no more revenues. If these revenues were short, I got to cut something in the budget." Does that happen often, or does it happen rarely, or it hasn't happened? Okay, it hasn't okay, happened. Good. Okay. Um, good to know. I mean, because. We've got a pretty lean budget to begin with. Yeah. We, I've, I've really right. um, instilled. It's always been been my philosophy. I do not believe in lose it or use it budgeting. You 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 won't ever see a glut of POs and purchases coming through the last two weeks of, of mm -hmm. June. You just mm -hmm. not going to see it. Mm -hmm. I believe in requirements, and if the requirement. You know, we've we've estimated that requirement's going to be X, and we get to the requirement and it's X minus Y. Well, guess what? Y falls to fund balance. It yeah. goes back. It doesn't get unless the board has a, a reappropriation desire for that. And I'm talking projects mostly. Um, if it's more, there's probably a reason why. And because of m my intent to just go with requirements I, I discourage budgeting that says well, we're going to add 25 percent in here because we know that we're going to get it cut that that doesn't make it off yeah. my desk and, and in front of the commissioners it just we just you can ask the department heads I don't support it but it also allows me the right standing to come back to the commissioners and say we need plus one because we we did not get this, and because I like to believe that because that we've got that in place and it's held over many years, we've got a strong fund balance and have the availability to go and tap into it whenever that plus one scenario arises, regardless of which fund it's it's in. Yeah. So I, and I digress. Well, that goes to the strength of the balance sheet. True. Yep. Yep. Take, some, take some of the risk out when you got, it, it does. You got a strong balance sheet. It does. 
but I, I digress. No, it's philosophy. That's a, that's a, no, that's extremely helpful. No, it's helpful because basically my takeaway is you've got this and you're doing this. Um, you know, how does how does the board get that comfort? <laughs> you know. Um, uh, well, I think you could represent. It. I actually. I, I made, Go ahead. I made a to do list based on y'all <laughs> talking. So it sounds like like represent graphically by department. That's what I would suggest, right? Budgeted yeah. expenditure actual. And so they it doesn't mean don't give them the underlying because then they have it. And you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I'm talking about your you know your workload because you're uh -huh. an army of one, right? So you know graphical representation by department would probably be really helpful for folks. The other thing that might and that might be this, but maybe we can. That's by fun. Oh, it's by fun. That's yeah, a little harder. Fun. That's a little harder to yeah. divine out, yeah. especially if you're taking your funding and dividing it across departments, yeah. depending on your source. But right. um, maybe if you could do it that way, it might help the board. Then you could see it's a police department. You know, is that what you want? Yeah. Well. No. I. I, I <laughs> <laughs> I'm what I'm doing now is I go to the LGC site and you can create, you know, those little charts. And, yeah. and it tells you where you, you know, you can, I want to compare to Ocean Isle, I want to compare uh, to Oak Island, oh. and, and, but I get a sense that that's totally disconnected from the financial, you know. <laughs> well, it, that, that it's a look back. Too. Yeah, right, 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 so right. right. You've got, you got to do both. In some, in some cases you look back, in some cases you look forward, yeah. in some cases you look back to look forward. Right, right. exactly. Um, so you've got, it, and you have different things. Yeah, and, and I mean, my, my sense is it's apples and oranges, and I, it you is. know. Yeah. Well, well, my, my, and how they're, oh. And how their cost allocating might be completely different. I think step one is to understand what the board wants to see and doesn't want to see. And yeah. we could put something before them to say these are the KPIs that yeah. you know that we need to we need to watch or whatever. And then we can have what the users need as opposed to what we think we should present. Right. So if you need a report, if you want to try to predict what the revenues are, what the B part revenues are going to be going out or whatever, the lodging tax went out. You can do that based on this chart because we've tracked it forever and we know that if this happens here, it's going to happen over here, something along those lines. Hey, uh, KTI, indicator's the last word. What's KT stand for? KPI. KP key performance got, indicator. Got, got, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really what, I think that's really what we're looking for. Is key, what, what do you really need to know? When you look at one sheet, there's several graphs on there, whatever it is, what, does that give you what you need to know on one yeah, sheet? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's... It depends on how you're tracking it. Like, I mean, after the budget's approved, you're going to just want to track how's our spend going compared to our budget, compared to our revenue, obviously. But, I mean, you're just going to want to see spend to make sure you're not out of line, right? I mean, just from a monitoring perspective during the year, now that you've finished your budget. Yeah, I mean, to me, the budget's done. Everybody's on board. This is our plan. So now it's like... Are we on track? Right. Are we showing a tendency? You know, I mean, I hear that rentals are off and it's a soft market and thing. You know, so it's like, is is that showing up here somewhere? Do we need to get nervous? Or are we okay? <laughs> um, so, like I said, you know, how are we doing on a month to month basis? How does it compare to some level? Maybe the prior year, or prior couple of years. How's how are we? As you know, get into the year, rental season's over. B part. You know, they. they you know, property taxes got this huge, yeah. you know, thing comes through. B part, mm -hmm. huge thing. Just trying to get comfort that we're on track, mm -hmm. um, we're we're proceeding, or we're we're, you know, yeah. if yeah. we're over or under. It's not significant. I if it is, we understand why. I um, I so, so oftentimes, what I see is you've got these detailed financials for anyone wants to dig into them, and then you've got a higher level. Yep. summarized financials, which you've got the ability to do in the system. And the question is, is at what level does the board want it summarized? Yeah, exactly. And we can we can come up with a suggestion on that for yep. the board. And then on top of that, you have your KPIs, your one page, plan on a page, whatever you call it, on the first on the first page. So if a board member just wants to sit down, they're not a financially oriented person, they say, oh, we got a little issue here, this all looks great, we're, you know, it's all go. Well, what about, and this looks off, what am I going to do? Well, I go to the summarized one, and that doesn't give me enough detail, so I dig back in here and I get the detail that I want. So they're providing a lot of detailed information if you want it, but, they're, but what you're not getting is a summarized version, or even more on top of that, what are the things that, if it goes wrong, we're going to have an issue on, yep. on top of that. Yep. I mean, I mean, That's a suggestion. No, I, I, I mean, where, I'm, where I'm coming from is if you look at our 
commissioner meetings, you know, you, you got the police department, you know, how many call outs, how many crimes, you know, what's your yeah, activity right. level, what's yeah. going on. Yeah. You got planning and zoning, you know, how many new building permits, how many whatever high level metrics. Do, do you do you really care how many calls the police department has? Well, well we did when we set the budget. You should probably care. Um, <laughs> If, if, if please, if if if, if theft um, is an issue on this island, becomes an issue on the island, I would expect the chief of police to be sitting in that chair telling you, Tom, hey, we got a problem with yes. theft on the island, and we need whatever, and that's what I hear. I I don't think you'd want to put that on your key key performance indicators, though. Um, but those are the things we need to to, I, to sort out. I I agree, and I, I you know. There probably, I know there are improvements that could be made to the police report and the planning and zoning report and, and those. Um, but what I'm, this is all about Daniel's report. When Daniel stands up and he gives his monthly report to the commissioners yeah. and everybody, you know, we're on track. This month was a little bit off because of this compared to last year at this yeah. time. Boom, 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 boom. Got it. And then that's that we're top good. summary sheet. That's yeah. that, that's and, that and, summary sheet. you know, I mean, I don't mean to be cruel, but this isn't it because it's, it's, it's I, I can't describe it. I don't, you know, it's hard to read. I mean, so, this, that was just my first. Time. No, I understand, and I'm not. Mm -hmm. it, I'm, I'm open to yeah. criticisms <laughs> on that to make any changes that y'all want to yeah. see. Yeah, I think we can get there. I mean, so, I so, yeah, I guess what I'm looking for this group is, you know, what do you think it should look like? I, and I would like to reach agreement first with people here and then what the Board of Commissioners want are what are the things we want to monitor? What are the most important things to monitor? Revenues and expenses. You know, I mean, well, I, yes and. I mean, that's why I said, and I know, because I, I think it gives the public a little bit more of a view if you're doing stuff by department, because you're budgeting by department, even though you might be, but, and I'm probably giving you heartburn right now, but I'm sure you have funding that is, you know, stretching across departments, but trying to see trends in are we overspending in one area, underspending in another, I think is important. Um, so that's the only reason. I understand what you're talking about, about the key performance indicators. That's different, right? Like how are we doing overall? But the other piece is if you're not showing it that way, I think it's hard for people to digest because that's the bucket that people put things in in their mind. They're not putting all of the, you know, Tax, tax rental income is coming in and it's spreading across. Like, y'all have already budgeted by department, right? Is that yeah, how well, do? actually, you can add, weigh in on this. The part of the confusion is like salaries, you know, there's certain items, salaries, communications, certain sure. budget items That's that are right, just spread across, across B That's part true. and general fund and all the funds. So you maybe know. those are admin. As opposed to department, right? They sit in the admin bucket. Because because that's what jumps out to me. Yeah. The apples and oranges is when we get um, the audit. Yeah. And I got an audit. You know, you can you can look at all the past audits and get all that. But it's it's police, it's public works, sanitation, right. beach nourish. You know, those major accounts. You can see. And yeah. those hit three funds. So <laughs> right, the right. fund reports don't tell us. You know. Right. It's hard to see. Aggregated. So. Yeah. Would you like it aggregated that way, though, by department? Uh, well, I tend to fall to the audits just because they're aggregated, okay. and I can this. But that's right. one year snapshots. Yeah, it is. Of, of you know, how does this audit compare to last year's audits? And last year, ten, you know, you can because uh, it's a very, very consistent, and you can pull them. But true. Um, okay, that's not a monthly commissioner meeting type of a thing. Right. Um, that, that's. Okay. You know, I can describe the problem. I don't have the solution. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's, uh, Why don't you create stuff for them to react to? Well, it'd be helpful to know what Harris can do that we're not making yeah. Yeah. something. Well, I, can, I can tell you we're operating at a distinct disadvantage. I still haven't been able to receive training on the new software. So, and, and I know that Daniel's not been able to get the value out of the training because the other day, we were talking about yeah, where how do we do this report and it was basically he didn't know and by me staggering through <laughs> some of the drop down menus i blindly found the box to check and it was i mean but that's the level that we're operating at now is we uh, at me specifically I, i'm having to ojt on the new software okay. can, can we do it a different way and ask what, I'm, what I'd like to see is if 
I were the new town manager, what would David give me as a sheet, one sheet to monitor the things? What do I need to be watching, and how do I watch them? Give me that sheet and do tell me every day when I come in or every month when I look at financials or whatever. There, Tim, that's what you need to look at first. Because if you don't, if you don't understand that or if you don't, if those aren't going in the right direction, you got an issue. Now, you want to talk about the budget for the police department? Well, let's go back here and talk about the budget for the police department. How detailed do you want to get? Do you want to talk about it in a fairly summary format or do you want to talk about it really detailed? We'll go back here and talk about the police department. So, I mean, if you guys are open to that, if you could do that in terms of, and I'm not talking about having a system program to do that. I'm just saying that what's the concept in terms of what would the sheet look like if we were to, if we were to put something like that together? Well, I told myself when I went into this meeting, your objective today is not is to come out of it without a, without a task. Because we don't have to do it. Yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's a and the way and the way months, and the way Tom described this to me the other day, it was uh, you guys were going to figure out what the board, <laughs> what type of report would be the best suited. Now I can I can tell you what my divination would be of the board, but, uh, uh, you know, that's a crap shoot there lately. Uh, but but I would I would stick to those general, you know, four things that I spoke to earlier. Um, if, if a new guy, new person was coming in, I would say those are the four things that you need to, to worry but about. To that also, I mean, it is hard to look at those on a month-to-month -month basis. I mean, well, that's why like some of them are going to be a trend. Right. Some of those will be a 12-month yeah. rolling, 12 rolling 12 months. Yeah. Some will be a yeah. six yeah. years, yeah. a six-year, yeah. whatever. I mean, we, we won't, we won't, we won't monitor, start looking at uh, what ad valorem taxes are until the last week of December. Yeah, because I mean, so it's not, I, I mean, there are some hyper motivated people that pay taxes early, but <laughs> but you know, it's chump change up until the last week of December, wow. and then you know, the next six the next six weeks, you know, we've been eyeballing it, you know, every few days to make sure and uh, just seeing where it where all that plays out, whereas the occupancy tax and the parking revenue, that's a, that is a, you know, it's a week yeah. uh, in, in, in every month that occupancy taxes come in and it's one day a yeah. month when the parking check right. comes in. So th there, there is a, 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 a difference in eyeballing, I guess. Right. Right. But, but the way you'd handle the ad, val ad valorem tax then is you have a rolling 12 months. Yeah. 12 months. June drops off, June comes in. July drops off, July comes in. And what's that tax base doing over that rolling 12-month period? Because well, you compare it period to period then. And, and, and that particular that point in time is zero, but yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I understand. So, so basically, I saw a need, you know, yeah. and yeah. I want to tap into the expertise we've got sitting here because yeah. we've got yeah. great expertise. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to just ask if, you, if somebody wants to sign up and work yeah. with David and work with Daniel I'm and, happy to, yeah. and and you know I, I would rather not right. just because I got my right. My, yeah, yeah, I can. I'm happy to. Um, I'll, I'll, we can talk about. It. We can do an infographic. Okay. I'm good. I do that for the feds. They love them. <laughs> so, I'm happy to help as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll do them. Oh, yeah, that's. I, I think you can get something that gives you that at a glance. Okay. You still get the underlying, right? It's fine. Right. But you get your at a glance. Right. These are the things. Um, that's not. And again, I don't know about your system. That's different. So we need to talk about that. But um, are, are other cities, cities are, I guess, using it? Oh, yeah. The, the League of Municipalities, the they lady that was it. sitting at my table hadn't heard of I, You know, she was aware of some other ones. It's like. I, I just so. wonder if you need a field trip. If they're not giving you the support you need, like a field trip to another jurisdiction to see how they're, cause you, if you have a that, nice system, you should just be able to button it. You know what I mean? Like it should, it should produce something for you. Well, we can definitely produce written reports. I haven't seen where we can produce graphic reports directly from the system, though. Ew. Which okay. might, be, might be possible. Though. Okay. All right. <laughs> the training that we've gone through this far is. How to how to do our daily tap yeah yes. inter, inter transactions not how long really pulling yeah. reports how, how long it have? just converted at January uh, December January okay. yeah it takes a minute so okay. we're we're still bugging 
Sure, got it. Okay. Debugging. Right. I got you. Well, if you're willing to step up, and sure. I, I'm happy to help. Okay, if you two yeah, can anyway. work yeah. together sure, sure. and we'll work with Daniel, up. and then, um, then the other, the only other question then is timing. You know, we do need to meet quarterly. We can meet more than quarterly if we want to. Um, we kind of picked two more dates that, for the audits. So that gives us three. So we've got another date mm -hmm. if you want to regroup on this at some point. Um, yeah, once we get once we get her. Um, schedule of the audit activity finally. Yeah, it sounds like I, what I took in my notes is going to be one in October and then it's going to be one in November. Okay. I don't know day, time, yeah. or anything. But, okay. um, so that would be our next meeting? Well, unless we want you want to meet to discuss where you're at with Let's see what kind of this. progress you make. Yeah. Um, okay. If you guys are willing to you know, yeah. say you need a month or whatever you need, we're... we're well, it's going to be... Do you want me to take a whack at it and then share it? Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll, I'll come sit by you. It'll be fun. For both of us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So why don't you guys talk, see when you think you've got something. We'll have yeah, Heather work on calendars. But we should probably, I, mean, I assume this would be before the October meeting that's driven by yeah. the audit. Okay. 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 Um, Tom, I got one other question mm -hmm. on a different topic. Can you guys ought to tell me whether we can discuss it? And I guess it's related. It's it's hugely related to the audit and audit risk. And that is, I think about the peer. I think about the block queue and the other things that are going on. The accounting that goes with all of that. At what point in time? You know, where are we in terms of staff and staffing and and um, the whole uh, our whole department in terms of what we need? And I heard these guys now are not getting training. Um, and I, and I think about that accounting as well. Where, just kind of where are we? How do we size up our accounting department, our finance department? Well, let, let me tell you my understanding of history, and David and Daniel, you can correct my history. David, David had both hats. He was the, the budget office chief finance, finance director. He, he was and finance Tom and town manager. So a year ago, when did you come on? January? No, Daniel's been oh, here for three been, years. Three years? Uh, I was going to say. Three oh, years. okay. So Which I was. I, I came on as a fiscal analyst. I wasn't the finance officer until last January. Jan that's what I was thinking of. So as of January, he became the finance director, yes. finance officer. Uh, David's still the budget officer. So that was 100% well, growth. I'm, of the <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the manager, and the manager by statute is the budget okay. officer. Okay. So basically, we doubled our staff. You know, within the time frame when Daniel, but that's where we're at, right? No, that's no. not correct. No, because he was here. He was Daniel, here full time. Daniel, um, there was a fiscal analyst prior to Daniel. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So that's the history. That. Okay. So then, yeah, I, I mean, you guys the, weigh in about the numbers. The numbers of administration staff are that have been constant for years. Okay. Regardless of what flavor we wanted to paint them, if that makes sense. Yes, I redundancy. I understand. Which is, I don't know if it makes sense, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you think the staff would grow over time, given the, no. given the, what we have. A, a lot of the surrounding communities are starting to hire assistant finance directors. I had to kind of walk in just hired one this past year. Um, yeah, that's a different kettle of fish there too, right? Oh yeah, no. I mean, every, every beach is going to be different. Okay, that uh, yeah. is a growing. Yeah, position, it, it, as well as grants manager, especially. Yeah, yeah, and I was going to mention it when Elsie was here, but you know, a lot of this is kind of falling to the new town attorney to figure out the legal obligations. It's probably an expensive way to address that need. Yeah, because a grant manager will do it. You don't, yeah. you don't really need an attorney to figure out your compliance with a special condition because nonprofits do it all day long without an attorney. But I think that. It is, again, it's a good deal if you can manage it. The issue is managing it, and it's a lot of reporting. That's the problem. You know, it's so much. Every Who does all that? Do you do all that? The no, that's, 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 that's handled uh, with our grants that are in existence now. Yeah, all of those are being, at, they're really a function of the B Park Fund, which yeah. is the, the assistant town manager's yeah. uh, bailiwick, and she, since she has... Uh, develop the expertise for the uh, administration of federal grants specifically and now 
Cama grants, she's become the belly button that, that handles okay. those. Just, I mean, it's by necessity that um, um, it's, a lot. But it, it's, it's how we're getting it done. But, it's, but yeah. what it means is there's a capacity issue at some point. You're, I, you and I are like right here with us because the she also has to be the assistant town manager in the Department of yeah. Recreation and <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean I, I don't know. I, I know, I, but I, I don't yeah, know. and do yeah. grant compliance all at the same time. Yeah. And so at some point, like the town could easily qualify for some other grants they're not getting. Right right I can think of some right off the top of my head. The concern is if they get them, then can they Report on them and yeah. ensure compliance and do all the things you got to do because that's yeah. you know that's work. Mm -hmm. it, it's it, it's appropriate for me to make a manager statement here and this. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Uh, from now on, when we go to grants, we're going to be pricing in contract administration. You should. Whether that that is hiring somebody part time or getting a uh, or getting a uh, because there's um there's usually admin money in there. There's um. Yeah. Oh gosh, you know, there's a there's a part time body that would be an employee, but there's yes. the uh, consultant that do that's all they do, yeah. and um, yeah. that's where I'm going the next time that one Smart. comes up. Yeah. I've been, you know, we we've, we've learned how to do this, but where we are now is it it is it we are a classic case of we're riding a great horse into the ground. We're rewarding, <laughs> we are rewarding performance with more work. Yep. And that ain't going to hold out for That's very right. much longer because the pony is going to be ruined. What's your assessment of the need in the finance department? Is there a need in the finance department? Yes. And what does that mean? It's probably plus one. To do a um, variety of issues, uh, probably the uh, variety of tasks, probably the most important one is to um, provide uh, internal control uh, in processing because now we've got to imagine how our internal controls work out depending on what the program is we have to we have to engineer our internal controls depending on what the program is thank you but i would let the finance director um weigh in on on that because he's the one that suffers yeah. you know from, from all the stuff, and he's the one that is statutorily responsible for anything being a right. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree. I mean, we've got, I mean, I'm the finance officer, I'm the designated. I have to sign the checks. But we designated a deputy finance officer, but you've got other roles too, and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it is a separation of duties. Like, you have to have separation. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's quite challenging because then in the same breath, whenever we have management philosophical discussions, we get hit with, oh, and by the way, we have to cross-train people. Well, guess what? I got four people. You know? <laughs> I got four people. You know, how do you re re remain, you know, you keep islands, you know, separate and apart when you, have, when you must cross-train them? And, you know, we, okay. we, we do what we can. Yeah, got it. Got it. Thank you. And the only good news, my expectation from what I'm hearing of GovHub is it will, you know, we've got a learning curve, but it's got a lot more, auto, you know, ability to it, yes, uh, offload lot, some work. Yeah, it's, it's automated some of the entries that we do. Um, and we're working on its bank rec capabilities, too. So that would be huge if it could yeah, help out with that. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> That to me justifies training or whatever to get to that point where you're leveraging yeah. that software, that investment, because it, it's got paperless capabilities too, right? You can, you Yeah, know, and we're in the process of actually filling out that paperwork. I've got it on my desk right now to do the, uh, the paperless like, payments and stuff. Yeah, water bills and things, yeah. direct debit, yeah. So. Okay. 
they'll be able to slice and dice, eventually they'll be able to slice and dice those financials any way the board wants to see them. Our challenge is figuring out what the board wants to see and how they want to see them. That's yeah, right. and that's, that's right. the thing. There, there are a lot of reports. Yeah. 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 And then, and then as boards change, they want to see different things. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that could change over time. Okay. Okay. So I don't thank you for signing up. Uh, that's it. Uh, unless somebody else has got something else. I'm going to readjourn. Tom, okay. my understanding was that you wanted from Elsa the weekly schedule that she was going to be on for June, July, not just the you know, November, August. Or no, what I asked for were the um, were the like kind of landmark dates, if you will. The milestones. Yeah, I know what you asked for. I was talking about the time. Yeah, for, oh, oh, I was thinking of meetings. So, yeah, the, this is the schedule of what they're doing um, and when the information would be available. But we would, the big meetings that, that I was putting on were the, the one in October, which is prior to going to LGC and then one right. after. But my understanding was that you wanted the weekly setup or the bi weekly or whatever meeting she was going to have with this staff. So that you could audit those or participate in you know, this. Sort of there, there's not really a bi-weekly or weekly meeting that we have with the with the auditor. I mean, she we're, mentioned we're, several weeks. By the end of uh, the third week in July, we'll have this done. We'll have this done the fourth that's week. That's right. That's just their workload. I mean, we're we're constantly sending them stuff, and they're asking for more stuff. Okay, then, just then I need to go back and forth. And I have a question: Is how does that process work? She doesn't come here. You send her stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The, they've got a. Uh, it's, a site. it's called Sherling, yeah, the portal, um, and there's a, their request of what they want, their date they want it by, and the thing where we can attach the file so we can scan it in, and, and then their, their whole team has access to that rather than just one person. Okay, and, and I just learned something. I thought you, you were, that was an on-site kind of mm -hmm. process. No, no they're, they're, where are they based at? She's further away than I thought. Yeah, Cree. Yeah, Where? Hickory. Hickory? Okay. Yeah. Elsa actually lives so, in Raleigh. So, 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 so yeah. Yeah, I think they have, well, they have multiple. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So that's why it's important, like, she was going to be here this week, so we would, mm -hmm. yeah. and we can yeah. match her schedule. She's going to drive, you know. But, but Mike, to, uh, to your point, though, they, they do have some down here time. For example, like she was talking about, tomorrow they're, she's going to be <laughs> She's going to be over at Public Works counting inventory in the warehouse over there. Required. So she's probably going to yeah. lose about 10 pounds tomorrow. <laughs> that thing is 100 degrees over there at daylight. So, and then, you know, they, then they have, I think it's a week as the, the Just, interim. July yeah, uh, so that, they do have some time down here, but it's, it's all green eye shades work. You know, they're down on the table. But the majority of the inputs that we provide are in near real time through the portal system. Okay. Yeah. It's not going to be long and nobody's going to understand that comment anymore about green eye shades. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Georgia. test, yeah. <laughs> that was a test. I just that old. <laughs> <laughs> Those that have worn them, huh? <laughs> I move we adjourn, Tom. Huh? Okay. Sir. Second. Second. Aye. Uh, favor? Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> okay. we're, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Dave.